Are you ready for season one, series one of FIFA 21 here at Everton? Start things off right. Hit that subscribe button with the notification bell ticked and set to all notifications. You'll never miss an episode. It'll come to you daily. But, extra caveat, if we hit 4,000 likes on this opening episode, I'll give you two videos tomorrow. Two. So make sure you drop a video, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. You already know what I'm going to ask for you in the comment section of this video, but with it being FIFA 21 career mode, there are extra things I need to ask of you. It's not just transfers I need your feedback on anymore, and we'll get into that a little bit later on in the video. To start with, this one is brought to you by the Game Changers program again. EO very kindly given myself and a number of Game Changers codes to the full game. This is the launch version of the game. No early game, ca early game capture message. This is full FIFA 21, the full series, and we are underway. This is on PlayStation. Uh, my Ultimate Team streams will be on Xbox, and then career modes after this will probably be on PC with mods. But this one, early access on PlayStation. So, at Everton, we'll get into training at a later date. We're going to concentrate today on what we want to do to the club, or to the squad, with regards... Development plans, new thing to factor in this year. I'm going to need your feedback on that and where I'm going to spend some pennies. Everton have been one of the best sides to watch in the Premier League so far this season. The most exciting teams to, uh, to watch play. James Rodriguez is a god in real life. I hope he does that sort of thing for me in this series. You can see my starting lineup here. I'll show you how much money I've got to spend in a moment. Richarlison's going to start on the left-hand side. I'm going to have James at Cam. Uh, I need to take Andre Gomez out of that right-hand side. And, well, to start things off, <laughs> I need a new winger, please, boys. That's the first area I'd like to improve on. We'll go straight into transfers, shall we? I would very much like a new right-sided midfielder, please. Or well, I guess, to be fair, there could be right or left. It doesn't matter. It's career mode. So, Decoray and Allen holding. Hammer is Cam. Yerry Mina, Michael Keane, Luca Digne, and Seamus Coleman. Might need a new right-back, too. Seamus Coleman, obviously... Aging slightly now at 31, and the initial starting 11 is decent, but I am going to need squad depth. We do have some decent depth in uh, players on the bench. I have Andre Gomez, who's going to be very good as a rotation central midfielder. We have uh, Gilfie Sigurdsson, who despite the fact that he's now 30, he's still going to be decent for the first season or so. We have uh, Gabamin, who obviously is going to be a good CDM. Great to grow from. But elsewhere, not that much depth. This The club needs work. Carlo Ancelotti's done a little bit of work in real life, but how much money have I got to spend now that we can add to what Carlo's already done? Let's have a look, shall we? I have £47.1 million available to me. I rather large wage budget there, so let's change that to 80-20. £55.4 million available to spend there. There are a number of players I'm going to want to sell as well, and I'll show you those in a moment. But to start off with, right from the bat, right from the off, I want a new right-sided winger. I might want a new right back as well, and I might want a centre back too. Comment section down below, transfer suggestions, hit me with them. Also, bear in mind, with your suggestions, not just for new players, but with regards to players I already have, I can now, of course, dictate how they grow and where they grow with the development plans. Who do you think I should grow in what direction? Take Luca Digne, for example. Good left back. His pace isn't that good. So if I go into my development plan, by default, everybody's on balanced. By default, everybody's on balanced. If I set him to something like attacking wide back, his pace will grow. I can get his pace up and his tackling will grow and his passing will grow too. And his passing's already very good for a wing back. His free kick accuracy is decent too. I could maybe uh, consider altering that as well with uh, a different training regime. But to start off with, I'm going to put Luca Digne as an attacking wide back with regards the development plan. Now, if you want to know what development plans are available for certain positions, I do have a video on the channel already for you for that. So you can see exactly what options you have in said positions. Check the channel page and you'll see the uh, how does development plans, how do develop does player growth work in FIFA 21 video. Let me know 
where I should grow certain players. And I will go through my squad over the course of the next three or four episodes and, uh, and let you know where I'm going to grow certain players thanks to your feedback. We do have a handful of players out on loan currently. And I have a number of players that I am going to look to sell on, like Chink Tosun adds to the transfer list. Sandra I could probably utilise to start off with, but I'll go through and I'll add everybody to the transfer list that I want to sell, and I'll show you those in due course. What do the board want from me this year? That's a question as well. We'll get through uh, some of the uh, the preseason games here in this episode as well, and we'll also start the Premier League season today too. So don't worry, there will be gameplay on the way. The board would like a top four finish. Hmm, that's going to be difficult. Youth development... We can have a closer look at that in a moment as well. Within two seasons, have at least one player from the Youth Academy signed in the first season, play 50% of the games in the next season. That's something we'll have to do today uh, or in this opening year. Brand exposure, 20 games with at least one goal scored this season. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. Signed three players from South America. I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure whether I want to fulfill that one. We'll wait and see. Financially, within two seasons, increase the club worth. Easily done. Easily done. Domestic success. Top four. Yeah, I'm not sure about that in this first season, but with no European football to concentrate on this year, we can solely put our focus on the Premier League and maybe that will work in our favour. Also reach the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. And again, short-term continental success goal. Qualify for the Champions League. I will give it my absolute best efforts to try and qualify for the Champions League this season. I have about £9 million available if I'm able to win the preseason tournament, we've not Villarreal and Lazio in our group. With regards to training, I'm going to go into that in a moment. And most notably, you guys will know here as well now that we have an already pre-populated youth academy. With FIFA 21 career mode, you no longer have to send scouts out immediately to get some youth players back. You already start with some in your club. If you order the higher editions of it, you get a Scout Future Star right from the off at the beginning of every save. We have five players here, a couple of which really intrigue me. Most notably, uh, Paulson, 72 to 94 potential, but look at his physicals already. Could be okay for a wing back if I can try and train him up. He's got good strength, so could be good. Again, I'm going to need your input with development plans here, please. We have Aslan, Murat Aslan, four-star, four-star, on the wing. Not that fast yet, but only 15 years of age can grow. Potential of up to 94, potentially. But the highest rated player is the one that has the lowest potential ceiling. Albert Franklin, but physically looks really good already at 17 years of age. Strength could be higher. Technically, dribbling and ball control at decent. He could be pretty handy cam in a season or two's time. We also have a couple of other players. Uh, Bernhard Schmidt also, to be fair, has a ceiling of uh, of 94. He currently is a right-sided midfielder, but obviously not of the quality I'm going to need at this stage. And we have uh, Jinguo Pan as well, who's a right or left-sided midfielder with a ceiling of 88. Again, let me know development plans, lads. Apologies if this opening bit is a bit waffly. Let's get cracking, shall we? As you guys will be aware with training, it's new this year and works completely differently. I've had to go in and manually do these drills and they will now default at that best grade. By default, they default at D. So to be able to get the most out of each drill, you're going to have to go in and play it. You only have to play it once. Go in and play it. And then because I've got a best grade of A on this interceptor, every time I have the interceptor, I can now sim it and get an A rating and get the most boost out of my players' uh, sharpness. Their fitness will dip, of course, so you have to manage your squad accordingly. The way that I've found so far, the best way to do it is to maintain high fitness, high sharpness, and high morale, is to not train your starting 11, allow them to maintain their sharpness from playing games, and their fitness will recover throughout the week. Train your bench and reserve players, keep their sharpness up, and... Uh, they'll recover on a match day when they're not being used. That's the best way I've found to do it so far. By all means, when you get your hands on the game yourselves, you might find a better way to do it. So uh, take that with a pinch of salt for now, but that's the best way that I've found to do it to this point. Those of you that aren't bothered about training whatsoever, as you may well have seen earlier on in the video, you can now, on this training day, if you would like to, as uh, you weren't able to do on the early capture footage, you now 
can just click in R3 and it will quick sim the training day and you don't have to bother yourself with it whatsoever. That is a nice new addition. Now, as you can see, I've had some transfer bids come in here. Uh, obviously, James Rodriguez is going absolutely nowhere, although they have offered me a swap deal. Like I'm going to get rid of James Rodriguez. Who have they offered me alongside James Rodriguez? Diego Demmer plus, plus 11 million. Uh -uh, not happening. Yeri Mina. Uh, he's going nowhere, thank you. He's one of my highest rated centre-backs. Let me show you then what I've done with regards players on the transfer and loan list. I'm looking to move on. Yannick Balassi, Chink Tosun and Mohamed Beshitz. I'm loaning out a number of the youngsters. I therefore will not have that deep a squad depth once those have all gone through. However, that's where you guys come in and your transfer suggestions will get acted upon and we can move forward and build upon the squad depth that we've got. Now, you'll also be aware that the new interactive match sim is uh, another new mechanic and new feature this year. I will, as per you, most years, be utilising the Play 3, Sim the Rest, one month per episode uh Templates, shall we say, that I've used in previous seasons. I'll quickly show you, actually, uh, what I'm doing customization-wise. Game settings. I currently have it set to legendary. Competitor mode is on. If you don't know what competitor mode is, there's a video on the channel for that. And CPU sliders are currently set to default. We will monitor that as we go through. And if it's too easy or too difficult, we shall adjust it accordingly. Judging by my experience on the early version of the game, this is about right. With competitor mode turned on, I'm finding it to be as difficult as I would like it to be to make entertaining content. So, we're going to sim here, and I'll quickly give you, and I, those of you that haven't seen the previous videos, I'll show you what the new interactive match sim is all about in this little clip here. The rest of these pre-season games, I'm just going to quick sim, because we want to get through and towards the Premier League as quick as we possibly can. And uh, then they're on out. We'll do a month per episode. And each simmed game will be an interactive match sim where I will cut together highlights of me commentating on what's going on. Hopefully to this point you're enjoying the video. If you are, please do drop the video a like. Like I say, 4,000. And I will give you two episodes tomorrow. Once I know what your transfer suggestions and development plan suggestions are moving forward. But hopefully you're enjoying and uh, I'll not waste too much time uh, just waffling on at the beginning of this particular game. I shall cut to you when there's a highlight. Looks like there might be a highlight. No, they've run that off the pitch. Nice ball through. Dominic Calvert-Lewin gets the goal. And I believe it was James Rodriguez with the assist as well. You can jump in and out at any point, of course, by the way, with this interactive match sim. If you don't know how it works and you would like to see how it works in a little bit more detail, I do have a video on the YouTube channel for that already that you can go and check out. But for here, for now, in the, well, 28th minute as we stand, the goal went in just a few moments ago. We have ourselves a 1-0 lead and we might be creating the opportunity for a 2-0 lead. Oof, we did, but he's missed it. Not working that about well. They've equalised here 10 minutes before half time. Well put together move, tucked away nicely. Number five is in space. They see Ravella, the former Liverpool man. And they have gone 2-1 up here, not just before half time. In stoppage time, Imond has given them the lead. Ah, it's not exactly what I was after, lads, to be honest. Not exactly what I was after. Let's make some changes in that second half. Hamas has played well, but you can see that his stamina is dropping. So I'm going to bring on Gilfie at half time. And let's add a bit more pace up top. I'm going to take Calvert-Lewin off. I know he did well. I know he scored. But we'll put Bernard on the left and Richarlison at striker and see if that works a little better. Corner for Nantes to try and make it 3-1 and get a win from this first preseason game. Can we go on a counter-attack through Seamus Coleman, perhaps? Looking for a ball down the line. Theo has made a good run. Oh, lovely ball by Gilfie to Richarlison. He's played the 1-2. Richarlison's in again and we're equal. We're level at 2-2. Richarlison is going to be a very important player for us in this save. Not only because he's damned good, but because he's versatile too. I can play him at striker, out wide, a bit deeper at cam. He's going to be so crucial to the way that we play, as are Ducouré and Allen. 
through the middle in those holding defensive roles as well. Hopefully they can work a little bit better in future games to help keep the opposition out. Conceding two goals in the opening preseason game isn't amazing, but it's preseason. Theo's in his three. We're going to win in our first preseason game. That is the start we were after. Yes, boys. I love that. We are looking to improve, of course. Everton don't have the top four Premier League title challenging squad that they're going to need if we're to win a number of trophies here during our time at, uh, at Goodison Park. But a win on the opening preseason game gives me confidence and scoring goals too. Could be a little bit more firmed at the back, but that's where we need to improve. I want a new centre-back. I want a new right-back. So promising signs, promising signs. I've had a transfer offer for Richarlison, which obviously I shall reject, but it's come from Atletico Madrid and it's for £52 million. I am going to have to turn down some big deals for my, or big offers for my uh, my big players but I am determined to keep my stars and I'm determined to bring in some quality players as well. Balangine is going to go out on loan to Augsburg for a year. I am quite happy to accept that straight off the bat. He will go out on loan to the Bundesliga and hopefully get some decent first team experience. We will quick sim the game against Villarreal. Quite easy to do. Oh, there you go. That's the usual quick sim that you're used to from previous uh, iterations of the game. Unfortunately, we've lost that one, but not to worry. We got three points in the first uh, preseason game. Let's see if we can get a win against Lazio in the next one because the games are coming thick and fast. There are, is very rarely the opportunity to have a training uh, module in between all that. There is the opportunity to have that now. So again, I haven't played all of the training modules that are available to me. So at the beginning of a save, I don't know if it carries between saves, something that we need to do uh, as an experiment or I need to look more into, but I need to go and get high grades in other drills and then we can hopefully balance our squad as best possible. Balogim has gone to Augsburg for a one-year loan. Now, I need a result in this game against Lazio to ensure that we can get ourselves out of this pre-season group. A draw won't be enough. I need a win from this quick sim. To ensure that we get the chance to earn some more money, which we don't get. Lazio beat us, unfortunately. So that's defeat and out of the preseason tournament at the group stage stage. So not able to maximise the amount of money we could potentially have gotten from that preseason tournament. Only £1.8 million, unfortunately. Could, however, get some money from the sale of Cenk Tosun. Uh, £5 million is his valuation. I reckon I can get up to 6.2, but... They've bid at 5.5, and I'm quite happy to accept 5.5 from Granada there for Cenk Tosun. We have not the need for him, that's for sure. So, that's him done. I'm going to now go and ensure that I can maintain the uh, the level of stamina, etc. in all of my players before we get, and sharpness, most importantly, before we get to Leicester, and we'll play that game, and probably Crystal Palace as well, as we look to start the Premier League season off on the right foot. I had a transfer offer for Fabian Delph of £8.2 million from Wolves. Initially, I was kind of keen to hold on to Delph for squad depth, but I do have a number of centre mids, and he is ageing, and his value is only going to deteriorate from here on out. So I will try and get a little bit of uh, extra above valuation for Fabian Delph. Maybe I could contemplate seeing if there's anyone that they might be willing to let come to me. Now, I'm looking for a right-back. Nelson Semedo is a transfer that I manually moved there. Ruben Vinagre could be a good player to try and bring in as a, as a wing-back. I could do with a backup left-back as well, to be fair. Um, Vinagre plus... I suppose a new transfer fee, because Vinagre is going to be quite expensive. Say so Vinagre plus 3 million? I don't know what he's valued at or what his rating is. No, they're absolutely not interested in that whatsoever. Okay, good to know. Tosun, as you can see there, has officially been sold as well. So we have an extra £4.3 million added to the transfer budget. And we're very nearly at the first game of the season, which will be against Leicester City at home. Loan offer for Anthony Gordon with an option to buy from Salzburg. Now, I'm open to letting him go on loan, but I don't want to let them buy him at the end. I want to see how Anthony Gordon grows here at Everton and we'll see if he can become a player that we can use in a couple of seasons time. So I'll propose a loan without a buy option and see if they're open to that, which they're not.
they were only keen on buying him at the end of that loan. That's fine. And Marseille have offered me £31 million for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Now, obviously, you guys have seen how incredible a season he's having so far in real life for Everton. And he's certainly going to be my talisman up top to start with. So, fingers crossed, we can keep hold of all of our best players. You can see I've gone through over the course of uh, the past few minutes and uh, off camera done all but the majority, all oh, but a couple now, I think, of these... Uh, training drills i believe that's the only one i have left so you can see it shows you what your highest um score is in each of them and i think i think actually i should have done them all by now yep so it's just this one set pieces one left and i'll play that and then i'll simulate the rest and then we're ready to go we will get a's or b's there was a couple with a C that I wasn't too good at. But we'll get A's or B's in most of the training drills, which will mean that sharpness will stay up. And we should be in a great position to tackle the majority of the, of the season without having to fiddle too much with the way that uh, our training drills are set up. So hopefully... I'm actually going to aim this. I should have aimed that high, really. It's a good save. So hopefully we can have ourselves a good season here. I'll see you leading up to the game against Crystal Palace. Unless there's anything else to bring to you transfer-wise. How about a transfer for Mohamed Beshitz here of 1.7 million? I mean, I'm quite happy to accept that. He's not a player that I'm going to use. He's not a player that's going to have that much impact on my uh, on my team. So I'm quite happy to let him go. And uh, we can head now to this game to open the Premier League season against Leicester City. This will probably be the only game that I play, actually, in today. So I had a transfer for, for Calvert-Lewin again, this time from Lyon. Obviously, a highly sought-after player. And a Gordon loan offer this time from Cadiz in Spain, purely just for the loan. Quite happy to let him go to a club like that, and they should give him at least some first-team football there. My first pre-match press conference, which we'll go to now. You can see that's what my manager looks like. I've got the, uh, the suit with the club badge on it. Doesn't look anything like me, but I didn't want to waste 20 minutes trying to make him look as much like me as I possibly could. Uh, we'll get to where we want to be this season, regardless of the shortcomings of the preseason tournament. We we have to qualify. I'm confident we're good enough. Uh, we'll have to go with people's expectations. I'm not massively confident that we will finish top four this season. It has been a quiet window so far, but you guys are going to come clutch for me. It's about getting the right players, not necessarily just any players. And you guys are going to come in massive for me over the next episode or two. So uh, I will play with 66 million pounds available to us now. I'll play this game against Leicester City. And that probably is where we will call this first episode. And then, like I say, 4,000 likes and you'll get two videos tomorrow. Let me just quickly double check that everybody is as I would like them. Slightly, uh, well, everybody in the first team is good for sharpness. The majority of people on the bench are good for sharpness too, as we've been managing the squad as best I can. And uh, we'll push forward from here and see what we can do in this game against Leicester City. Leicester City starting lineup for this opening day of the Premier League season. Kasper Schmeichel in goal, Ricardo Pereira, Soyuncu, Ben Mee and Benjamin Mendy. James Madison, Wilfred Ndidi and Yuri Tielemans with Ozzy Perez, Jamie Vardy and Harvey Barnes. On the bench they have Slimani... James Justin Kelechi. Some players that could make an impact. Surprised to see Benjamin Mendy at left back here for Leicester. It's obviously who they've uh, chosen to replace Ben Chilwell with. He now being obviously at Chelsea. This camera angle is zoomed a little bit too far out for my liking. So I'm going to go and adjust that. And then we'll crack on. Dini. Down the line there to Richarlison. Now as I mentioned earlier on. We are playing on... Default legendary at present with competitor mode enabled. Now you'll have seen from the Chelsea mini series that I did on the early version of the game that we got access to via the Game Changers program that the AI are very capable in possession on competitor mode, which is why I've left it on default legendary for now rather than stepping it up to uh, using my sliders. I am intrigued to see what the AI play like with competitive mode enabled on default legendary on the full game. It might take an episode or two to figure out where the best settings are, but it's like that every year and we always seem to find the sweet spot. So I'm very confident that we're going to have an entertaining series here at Everton. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed the episode so far. This is the first, of course, on-field action you've seen. 
And from here on out, of course, there will be plenty more on-field action as we've gotten ourselves through the rigmarole of pre-season now. Time to crack on with some transfers in the next episode. Thanks to your guys' suggestions and, of course, get the Premier League underway. Driven into Jamie Vardy. He's gotten away from Michael Keane. Vardy whoa, buries it. No mistakes from Jamie Vardy with Leicester's first chance of the game. They were not missing that. My defence was a bit all over the place, to be fair, positionally. But you can't catch Vardy when he's away like that. And he's buried it beautifully. I am going to have to make a change, I think, to my in-game tactics. I haven't altered anything uh, individual tactics-wise. I have slightly altered the overall kind of game plan, how I want them to play in offence and in defence. But certainly, positionally, they were all over the place there. I had Yerimina at right back and Seamus Coleman tucked in at centre back, which just didn't work. So it's a case of figuring out where we're strong, figuring out where we're not, and then going from there, I think. But hopefully, Hammers will be able to unlock this Leicester back line once or twice over the course of this fixture, and we will be able to get ourselves back into the game. Lovely ball over the top. Dinier brings it down really well. We held on to possession well in the first half. I just wasn't quite creative enough. So I'm hoping with a little bit more concentration in this second half, a little bit more impetus on being attacking and playing some quicker passing rather than just taking my time and trying to build something, we could get ourselves back in the game. And Hammers Rodriguez is the first man to score a goal in an Everton shirt this season. Yes! It had to be Hammers, didn't it? It had to be Hammers. Brilliant finish on his left foot. Great turn as well. We're off the mark at Goodison Park. Nice ball by Theo back into him. Lovely turn to send Soyuncu. And well, that left foot is a wand. Keep that up, Mr. Rodriguez. More of the same, please. Alan, driven forward to Theo Walcott. In there to Calvert-Lewin. Hammers is on the move. Theo will look for him again. Could turn provider here. It's Richarlison in the box. Richarlison. Oh, good block by Ben Mee. Kalidou Koulibaly, you just saw there, top left. Gone to Real Madrid in this opening transfer window. Just before we end the episode, I will show you what transfers have gone through thus far in the uh, in the save. So you, you know what players basically aren't going to be available for me. When it comes to uh, giving me some of your suggestions, you might be able to go back and edit some of your comments if you've already left them, of course. Richarlison back in there to Decore, and we'll try and get ourselves a victory on opening day here if we can. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a player I hope will grow quite well for me in this save. I could really do with... Ah, he's, with him being onside to start with, and I could really do with some good growth from him because he has the potential to be a killer striker at Premier League level, both in real life and on FIFA. Ozzy Perez, they're trying to catch me out here. Luca Digne, oh, it's perfect weight for Jamie Vardy. And you give Jamie Vardy the space and time there, and he will bury it. 2-1 <sighs> to Leicester City. Jamie Vardy's gotten them both. That was just an expert pass, and Yerimina not being quick enough to be able to get to it, unfortunately. We pull ourselves level. They've pulled back in front again. Alan. Wide to Theo Walcott. Hamez's movement, as ever, is spectacular. Calvert Lewin is here with him, but didn't really do him any favours with that pass. Richarlison into Hamez. I could try and slot Dominic Calvert Lewin in behind, which is exactly what Hamez Rodriguez has done, and Calvert Lewin will bury it. We're level again. It's a cracker at Goodison Park on the opening day. Four goals, two apiece, and so far, a share of the points as well. Hamez with a goal, Hamez with the assist. Oh, lovely ball the outside the left foot as well. Thought I'd done a little bit too much with that extra touch there, but just getting the shot away and into the back of the net it goes. Back to Ricardo Pereira. Soyun Chu. One thing I am going to struggle with to start off with this season is James Rodriguez's stamina. Whilst he is spectacular, he only has stamina of about 65. Indeed, 65. So it is going to be difficult to try and use him for the full 90 minutes, but I am determined to try and use Richarlison as my kind of utility player, and I can bring him centrally. What I am looking to do is train Richarlison 
Because, of course, positional changes are a thing this year. I'm looking to train Richarlison to having left mid as his default position rather than striker B's default position and left mid just be a preferred role. So I'm hoping that that will mean that we can get the best out of Richarlison as well because, rather obviously, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is going to be... Oh, I could play Andre Gomez in. He's off the bench. Oh, and he very nearly won it for us in the final few moments. Oh, I'm wanting to make the most out of Richarlison and ensure that we get good growth from him as well as everybody else. In my starting lineup, oh, great footwork from Vardy. Poor passing, though, and Andre Gomez could be involved again. Calvert Lewin is there. Oh, Gomez couldn't get it away from Ndidi, though. I just need to ensure they don't get this to Jamie Vardy, which they have done. And Vardy with some good footwork. Yeri Mina gets to him and gets the tackle in on this occasion, and it will be a share of the spoils. 2 2 at Goodison Park in a very entertaining end to end game to start the Premier League season. If we can have that level of entertainment, whilst perhaps edging victory, we could be in for a great first season here at, uh, at Everton. I will go and have a look at uh, changing Richarlison to a left mid by default, and we'll see how long that's going to take. And like I say, I'll have a quick show you of the uh, transfers that have gone through already. We go into the squad hub, and uh, we'll just swap the other way around. Although that helps. But we have passed that feedback on, by the way, that when you... Uh, when you swap, it kind of it still just goes the other way. So I want Richarlison. Say I want goalkeepers at the top because I want to go to a goalkeeper. I press sort. It still goes to Richarlison at the bottom. We have passed that feedback on. They are working on something. Don't worry. Right. Development plan for Richarlison. Because it's his third role, I believe it's, it's giving him that little exclamation mark. So how long will it take to change him to an actual left mid as his main prior... Uh, main... Preferred position, just 15 weeks. So that's what we'll do. We'll train Richarlison as a left mid. If there's anyone else you think I should add a position to or change position with, do let me know. As well as, of course, the uh, the transfer plans. Transfer plans? Yeah. The transfer plans and development plans for everybody else. Beshitz, unfortunately, won't go to Boa Vista. And the Torino of me, Christian and Saldi. Now, if this was five years ago... I'd have said, yes, I'll take Christian Ansaldi off your hands. But a 33-year-old Christian Ansaldi, no, I'm afraid Mason Holgate stays as an Everton Football Club player. Thank you very much. That, then, is where we will leave today's episode. We start the season in eighth after a point against, uh, Ever against Everton. I am Everton. Against Leicester. Ah, I was going to show you uh, transfers, wasn't I? Let's have a look at transfer history so far. So the biggest deals so far this window are, to this point... Koulibaly to Real Madrid for 97 million. Ciro Immobile has gone to Barcelona for 78.6. Of course, to replace Luis Suarez, who's now at Atletico Madrid. Leon Goretzka has gone to City. Abamyang to Atleti as well. Sorry, Arsenal fans. Lucas Maura has gone to Juventus. Samuel Titi to Arsenal. So at least you're getting some players coming in. Iñaki Williams to Spurs. Sabitzer to PSG. Lacazette to Liverpool. They're selling all their strikers, Arsenal. What are you doing, boys? Moussa Dembele to Leverkusen. Josip Ilicic to PSG. Vistja has gone to Chelsea. Benucci to Barcelona to replace some Titi, presumably. Dusan Tadic to Dortmund. Sigankov to Chelsea. Modric to Liverpool. Hello. Rashica to Inter. Benjamin Mendy to Leicester, as we saw. Tammy has been sold to Atalanta. Zinchenko to PSG. Dwight McNeil to Bayern Munich. Well then, Andre Kramaric to Manchester United. Zielinski to Hertha Berlin. Any other standout ones? Morgan Sanson as a player that perhaps you might have suggested. Alessandro Florenzi has moved from PSG to Athletic Club to Bilbao. Uh, was that Wayne Alden? Oh, no, it was Weindau. My mistake. Zambo and Gisa, Bergis, Lamella to Leipzig. Well, they were the biggest deals. And that is where we will leave you. Thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed. Please do ensure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on more. And tick that notification bell. You won't miss a thing that way. Follow me on Twitch for live streams of Career Mode and Ultimate Team. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with everything as well, of course. But for now, that's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you, provided you hit that like target, with two episodes tomorrow. Ta-ra.